Wow, it is, it's great. It is great to see Chapin Hall so full. Welcome and thank you all for coming today and for, for participating in what is one of the really the most important days in our calendar every single year. Um, there's a history to claiming Williams, which some of you know and, and maybe it might be new to some of you, but it started uh, almost a decade ago in a community response to a terrible racist incident that occurred on the campus. And the, the response came from the students. It was a student-led protest and it quickly became a larger conversation, a protest that wanted to, and very important that it did, draw attention to this fact, this very important fact that not everyone experiences Williams in the same way and not everyone experiences Williams positively. And that talking about that openly and candidly and caringly and then doing something about that fact has to be central to the work that we do at the college every single day. So it's not a conversation just for today, but today is the day that reminds us of that. And the essential spirit of, um, of, the, of, the, of the origins of Claiming Williams are in the program today. This is a community-led program. This is not an administration-generated program. This program came from all of you. Um, why is it called, why do we call this day Claiming Williams? Um, it's because it helps us remember that each of us, every single one of us, can and should claim Williams as our own. Williams is not a place that we are supposed to come and change ourselves to fit into, that, that exists out there and we have to become different people in order to be here. It's the opposite. Williams is a place that each of us who comes can and should act to change and make better. I think sometimes today, uh, sometimes in the last few weeks, I've been thinking about beyond claiming Williams, maybe today we need claiming America. I think this year, perhaps even more than the last year, uh, we need to reaffirm individually and collectively that we all belong here and that this is our America. Whether we are native born or immigrant, whether we are documented or not, whether we are Christian or Muslim or Jewish or atheist or any other religion or way of engaging with spirituality, whether we are queer or straight and whatever the color of our skin or the texture of our hair or the shape of our eyes, we are America, all of us, and we claim this country together as our country. Now the most important thing we will do today, and I think again, the most important thing we seem to need to learn to do in this country isn't to speak, but to listen. We need to learn from each other what we need to do so that others, so that all of us can claim Williams. It's a day of learning. So thank you for being here, all of you. Thank you for your commitment that your presence here and your engagement with what we're gonna do today means to examining and improving the Williams College that we all claim. And I want to give special thanks to the organizing committee who has worked so incredibly hard to pull this day together, and especially to the co-chairs, Annie Valk and Angela Wu. And now it's my pleasure to introduce our Vice President for Institutional Diversity and Equity, Letitia Haynes. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. As uh, Adam said, I'm Letitia Smith Evans Haynes, class of 99, and serving as Vice President for, office, for the Office of Institutional Diversity and Equity here at the college. I just have a few words to say and will not stand between you and hearing from the Honorable Barbara Smith. But it's wonderful to see you all here and all engaged in this, to be engaged in these critical discussions that will take place over the course of the day to reflect on the theme of moral courage. As an alumna and now a member of the senior staff at the college, it's a privilege to take part in this day and claim Williams. As you just heard, claiming Williams started in 2009. That was about 10 years after I graduated. And you know that it resulted from a series of disturbing events that raised issues of race, gender, sexuality, and religion in particular. But at that time in 2009, there were a lot of things that were happening in this country, in the world. Just to name a few, the Pittsburgh Steelers won the Super Bowl. Johanna Sigatora Dotier 
was elected as the first female prime minister of Iceland, becoming the first openly gay head of government in the quote, modern world. And Barack Obama became the first African American president of the United States, something that many, including me, thought they would never see, live to see. So this country and our world has made many strides, mainly because of moral courage. Moral courage is relevant, it is today, relevant today, it will be tomorrow, and it was yesterday. So as we claim Williams each year, I reflect on where we've been and where we aspire to be. Moral courage means thinking, learning, sharing, teaching, and acting. It means not just feeling bad for someone or bad about a situation, but doing something about it. That could mean writing a letter, making a phone call, urging that someone changes, changes a decision, or engaging in some sort of activism or advocacy. It means taking a position that is in line with helping to address what you see as the problem. So I urge you to think about how you exhibit moral courage throughout this day. I'm gonna sit down in a few seconds, and before I do, I wanna thank a few people. And I note that there are so many people to thank for helping bring this day together. Uh, you heard Adam Falk already mentioned, Annie Valk and Angela Wu, who are co-chairs. The entire Claiming Williams Committee as well. Carrie Green and her team. Facilities, dining services, communications, information technology, to name a few. And there are also some very generous alumni donors who give to diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts, and so I'd like to thank a few of them. The Davis family, many of you are, know, and also I'm happy to be able to thank in person the Bear family. I don't know where they're sitting in this audience, but they're some of our biggest supporter, supporters, and we have with us today Dr. Robert Bear, Mrs. Susan Bear, Talia Gofarb, and Danielle Eason, who helped fund some of the initiatives of the Office of Institutional Diversity and Equity, including initiatives like Claiming Williams. And finally, I want to thank each of you for being here today to listen, learn, share, teach, reflect, and support as you claim Williams. And now I'll turn it over to Annie Valk to introduce the Honorable Barbara Smith. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to Claiming Williams. Uh, I, I do want to say there are some empty seats towards the front, so if you're standing and you want a seat, uh, maybe if you have an empty seat next to you, you could just raise your hand. So if you'd like to move forward to take a seat, please do. Get yourselves comfortable. Uh, I'm Annie Volk, as you now know, and I'm one of the people who organize Claim organized Claiming Williams, and I also want to thank the team of people who helped put Claiming Williams together. This day wouldn't exist without the participation of all the people who are listed on the back of this program, and many, many more. So um, I hope that they know how personally thankful I am. And on behalf of the Claiming Williams Steering Committee, I want to say that it is truly a privilege to have Barbara Smith on campus for this year's Claiming Williams Day. When someone has been as productive and prolific as Smith, it's hard to know how to introduce her, especially without taking up a whole lot of time. Um, so I want to encourage you to look at her bio in today's program to get a fuller description of her work. And what I want to do right now is to say a little about why we were eager to have Barbara Smith deliver today's keynote. In particular, we were drawn to Smith because of the relevance of her work to the topic of moral courage, today's um, theme for Claiming Williams. Courage and bravery, taking risks to do the right thing despite possible repercussions, these have been recurrent themes in Smith's writing and traits that she has demonstrated throughout her public life. This is obvious, for example, in the groundbreaking book she helped to edit title, All the Women Are White, All the Blacks Are Men, But Some of Us Are Brave, the green book, as she just said, um, which has been on my shelf for many, many, many years. In this book, Smith and other black feminist scholars laid out a political and intellectual foundation for what would become a new field, black women's studies. In 1982, when the book was published, 
both women's studies and African-American studies were new and struggling for academic legitimacy. Many scholars believe that to criticize either field might risk being seen as undercutting the movements to which they are connected. But for Smith and her co-editors, Patricia Bell Scott and Gloria T. Hall, this was an imperative intervention. The book's main arguments are conveyed in its title, namely that in much scholarship and in the political movements of the time, black women were largely invisible despite their accomplishments and many contributions. Women's studies and the women's movement focused almost exclusively on the lives of white women, while black studies was male dominated. Because of white women's racism and black men's sexism, the editors argued, there was no room in either area for a serious consideration of the lives of black women. But the book's title also refers to a third group. All of the women are white, all of the blacks are men, but some of us are brave. The collection recognized that courage was required to call for a new field dedicated to the lives of African-American women. Merely to use the term black women's studies, they argued in the book's opening sentence, is an act charged with political significance. At the very least, they continued, the combining of these words to name a new discipline means taking the stance that black women exist and exist positively a stance that is in direct opposition to most of what passes for culture and thought on the North American continent. To use the term and to act on it in a white male world is an act of political courage, they said. Such words provide a brief, brief, brief introduction to Smith's groundbreaking work. Although they were published 35 years ago, these words serve as a reminder that our campuses are tied to a larger world of politics and culture, and that the most pressing issues of our times require independent thinking, our willingness to confront old ideas, the strength to persist in the face of challenges, and our courage to act. As a writer, activist, elected official, and somebody that I'm always thrilled to hear on Albany's NPR station doing political commentary, Barbara Smith has already supplied abundant inspiration and insights, and I'm sure she will offer more brave words today. So please join me in welcoming Barbara Smith. <laughs> 